Have you ever wondered how rich people are able to take so many vacations yet still get wealthier year after year? In this video, I'm going to be showing you a framework that I've used to justify going on over 12 vacations last year while still netting millions of dollars in profit. The word I'm going to be referencing the most in this video is going to be efficiency, which can be defined as capable of producing the desired results with little or no waste. So in order to make your life as efficient as possible, the first step is to define what our desired results are. Most people don't even take a few minutes to define what their desired results are, and thus they simply work for more, never actually achieving it. And if you're watching this video right now and you fall in that category, it's totally okay because that's where I've been for the past five years of my entrepreneurial journey, but you can change it starting today. A little exercise I recommend you do is sit down one night, have some nice lo-fi music playing in the background, relax on your couch, pull out a pen and paper, and write down 100 things that you'd like to accomplish or have at some point in your life. Now, it's important you understand that you cannot limit what you want here. Imagine that there's some magical wand and anything you write on that paper, you will be able to achieve in your life, but you only get 100 of them. Now, the funny thing is, the first time I actually tried this myself, I couldn't get past 30 things. That's right. I could not get past 30 things that I wanted out of my life. By the time I got to 30, I said, if I achieved even half of these things, I would have such an incredible life. And that just goes to show that if we keep on thinking we want more and more and more and not actually defining what more is, then we'll always be unfulfilled. But if you actually sit down and do this exercise, I challenge you to figure out how many things you can actually clearly say that you want out of this life, which will make the next steps that much easier. So now that we've defined our desired results in the word efficiency, let's talk about the little to no waste part. Here are five incredibly simple ways that anybody can be more efficient with their time. Number one, define your hourly wage. I don't care if you work for somebody else or if you own your own business, take a second to decide what is the number that you would like to charge for an hour of your time. It doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to be charging other people this, but it will serve as a benchmark in order for us to decide when we're presented with an opportunity or an activity, is this worth our time or not? Write that number down on a piece of paper and look look at it every single morning. For me, the number is $5,000 an hour. If I were to trade an hour of my time for something, then it needs to be something that I can make more money from doing that thing than $5,000 an hour. After I decided my hourly wage was $5,000 an hour, it became abundantly clear the things that I was doing in my life that weren't worth $5,000 an hour. Let me give you a few examples that I wrote down here. I no longer do these things. Number one, getting gas, which is roughly about five hours a year that you're spending getting gas. Number two, cooking, which is about 365 hours a year if you spend at least an hour a day cooking. Number three, laundry, which is 52 hours a year you're spending cleaning your clothes. Number four, grocery shopping, which is about 60 hours a year you're at a grocery store. Number five, washing your car, which is roughly about 13 hours a year if you say it takes you about an hour a month in order to wash your car. Watering your plants, which takes about 70 hours a year if you're like me and you have about 80 plants in your house putting together furniture or equipment for your home office studio or your new home that you moved into can be as much as 24 hours a year as well. And so that's totally 589 hours a year that I'm wasting doing things that are less than $5,000 an hour, which comes out to roughly 6.4% of my entire year or 24 days. I'm doing things that I not only don't want to do, but aren't worth my time. If I multiplied by hourly wage of $5,000 times the 580 nine hours that I just told you I was doing, that means that I would be roughly opportunity cost losing $2,945,000 doing all these things that I don't want to do. And this becomes even more obvious when you're able to go online very quickly and find someone on a website such as TaskRabbit to water your plants or assemble furniture for 10 to $15 an hour. That means that if you're deciding to assemble your own furniture, you only consider your time $10 an hour. Number two, batch your meetings and tasks. What most people don't realize is that it's almost impossible to multitask, yet most of us try to do it on a daily basis. And the other thing that most people don't realize is that there is an opportunity cost of switching between multiple tasks, meaning that if you were trying to do one task right now, and then you try to do another task immediately following it, there is a time where your brain's going to be disengaging from that current task and then re-engaging with the new task and then the time in between that as well. And some people say up to 30% of a person's day is wasted switching in between tasks. So if you're able to batch
batch specific tasks together all at once, then you're able to cut down that 30% quite a bit, thus giving you more time in your day and giving you more output in the work that you're doing. To give you a few examples, I only take meetings on Mondays and Thursdays, and not just on Mondays and Thursdays, but on Mondays and Thursdays from 12 to 6 p.m., which means that I run an eight-figure company on about 10 to 15 meetings every single week that all happen in those hours. I can thus schedule anything that I want to outside of those hours, whether it's working on the business or going on a vacation, and still be just as efficient as everybody else. In addition to that, you maybe have heard me reference my one thing time, which is every single morning from 5.30 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm actually working just on one simple thing that's gonna drive my business forward. And that allows me to stay hyper-focused on that thing and get more done in those four to six hours than most people get done in their entire week. Number three is to be wary of energy sucks. In order to do more with less, we have to make the less as more as possible. When I talk to my clients about my daily and monthly schedule, most of them are shocked at the number of things that I'm able to do, but it all comes down to energy management. How am I managing my energy? It's not uncommon for me to spend the first hour every single morning working on myself, doing personal development, reading, writing, meditating, and then spending the next six to seven hours working on my business, building out advertising campaigns or sales funnels that's going to take our business to the next level, then having six to 10 meetings with my team or clients in order to help them get to the next level, thus enabling me to get to the next level, and then wrapping up the day with a workout and then maybe even flying my plane along the coastline of Miami. And I'm able to do all those things in one day because I set myself up for success in my energy management. Here are a few quick tips on energy management that I've written down. Number one, stop or severely restrict the use of drugs and alcohol. I did this a few years ago and it totally transformed how I spent my mornings and my nights. I was able to actually sleep less, have better sleep, and thus perform better. I had better memory recall and I wasn't spending time going out at nighttime with, uh, you know, at clubs or parties, uh, what I would consider wasting my time instead of doing things that I actually truly enjoyed and not what society told me that I should be doing. The second thing is to work out at least five times a week. There have been plenty of studies that show that if you actually get your body moving, whether it's in a yoga class or Pilates or you're working out of the gym or you're going on a walk, that will give you more energy that your body can sustain off of for the rest of the week. Number three is to get anywhere from seven to eight hours of solid sleep. That's right, solid sleep. If you do drugs or alcohol before you drink, you're not having solid sleep. If you're looking at your phone or your computer and having that blue light hit your eyes right before your sleep, you're not having solid sleep. If you're sleeping in a hot environment with lights coming in everywhere, you're not going to have solid sleep. So make sure you're setting yourself up for success when it comes to solid sleep. Actually, 99% of energy management can be fixed by just prioritizing how you sleep at night. The next one's going to be wake up at or before 5 a.m. every single day. I know there's some night owls that watch this video that say that they want to stay up at night, and that's totally fine. The most important thing is that you get in some kind of circadian rhythm so that your body is adjusted to waking up and going to bed at a certain time every single day, whether it's a weekday or weekend. And I personally like getting up at 5 a.m. because I, my brain is as refreshed as possible and I start working on the hardest things for my business in that day. And that way I can be as productive as possible. And finally, feed your body fuel, not garbage. If you, every time you eat lunch uh, in the middle of your workday, you feel sluggish or tired or slow, or you have to take a nap or your brain is a little bit foggy, then it's probably the food that you're putting into your body for lunch. I actually hired a private chef to cook exactly what I wanted him to cook and hit my macros every single day. And I eat very clean. So that way I can have as much energy as possible throughout the day to achieve all that I want to achieve. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I am no stranger to ice cream or cookies. I do love those things and I have them sometimes on the weekend. But the idea behind this is you can 95% of the time be dialed in, which gives you the energy to do what you need to do. So number four is to get an executive or personal assistant. Once again, this doesn't matter if you are working for somebody else or you run your own business. If you go back to what we talked about earlier in what you define your hourly wage as, well, if you think you can hire an executive assistant or somebody else to do jobs for you that is less than what your hourly wage is, then you should probably do it. Many of you watching this may think that your wife, boyfriend, cousin, aunt, uncle, sister, son, daughter may do it, but in reality, that <clears throat> never actually works because when someone's doing you a favor and doing these tasks for you, you can't actually force them to do it or essentially require them to do it. And I've actually experienced that myself, having people that I care about doing favors for me, it becomes very difficult when they forget to do that favor or they do that favor poorly in order to actually give them feedback or correct them. I simply would much rather pay an executive assistant or a 
personal assistant to do the thing. That way I can make sure it's done every single time and it's done the way that I'd like to do it. Here are a few things that my executive assistant does for me on a daily or weekly basis. Number one, they actually help put together this presentation for me. Number two, creating dinner reservations. Number three, training, uh, planning my travel, you know, coordinating with other people, event planning. We host multiple events every single year for my company, Scaling with Systems, and they can take care of all of that. Uh, email management and literally so much more than I'm probably not listing here. At my hourly wage of $5,000 an hour, just saving me a few hours a month totally pays for my executive or personal assistant. And finally, number five, this is gonna be specifically for business owners as I know that's the majority of people that watch my channel. It's gonna be hire who's not house. No, this is not the name of a Dr. Seuss book, but rather a formula by a man by the name of Dan Sullivan, who teaches you to hire people inside your business that already know the majority of what you need them to do, and thus you don't have to train them on it. If you're just getting started inside your business, business, then it's typically okay to hire hows, meaning people that you tell them how to do something. You shoot them uh, Loom videos, you create Google documents, you create standard operating procedures, and you say, this is how I want something done. The only drawback of that is they are only as smart as you are, right? So if you're telling them what to do, then they can only grow to the limit that you are growing. And so if they have questions on something, they don't know how to do something, they're going to come back to you to ask those questions. And thus you are still the bottleneck in your company. Now let's compare that to who's which are going to be a little bit more expensive for you. But if they can come in and they already know 80 to 90% of what you need them to do, or even better than that, they already know more than you know about the thing that you needed them to do. Well, in a lot of instances, that's going to pay you back in dividends when it comes to your time and also the return on what they're doing. Here's a list of a few hows that I've hired inside my business that have totally transformed my life. Number one, a creative director. Number two, a customer success director. Number three, a marketing director. Number four, an executive assistant. Number five, an integrator. Number six, a sales team leader. And number seven, an appointment setting team leader. So all of those things I roughly knew how to do or I was doing those things on my own. But rather than hiring someone who didn't know how to do it or they just knew a little bit of it, I found some of the best people inside the industry and hired them in order to do these tasks and actually I end up learning more from them than they do from me.